Good morning again. This is Professor Grimfeld's Math 12 Statistics Lecture Series, and we are continuing today in Chapter 12, Section 1 on ANOVA, Analysis of Variance. We are going to proceed today and do Example 12-1, starting on page 649, and hopefully going to have a little learning experience here. I, I took a screenshot of <clears throat> the data that I have copied into the problem, and so that is what we are looking at. Let us go ahead and see what the research situation is. Uh, the theme is on miles per gallon, and it says a researcher, so that's us, wishes to see if there's a difference in the fuel economy for city driving for three different types of automobiles, small automobiles, sedans, and luxury automobiles. He randomly selects four automobiles, five sedans, and three luxury automobiles. <clears throat> the miles per gallon for each is shown at alpha equals 0 0.05. Test the claim that there is no difference amongst the means. The data are shown. So that was what we have copied down here. So let's proceed through this hypothesis test. So there are going to be a lot of calculations here, so that's why I included this screenshot of the data that I have here, because, um, well, I'm going to use the spreadsheet to speed up a lot of the calculations. But this is a simple hypothesis test, nonetheless. It's just five simple steps. Step one, state the hypotheses and identify the claim. All right, well, the way that we state the hypotheses for an F test, an ANOVA test, um, is as follows. We just generically say, okay, uh, for the null hypothesis, H subscript zero, all of the parameters, sorry, underlined the wrong thing, all of the parameters are just the same. Mu subscript one equals mu subscript two equals mu subscript three. Because if we don't go out and do any research and we don't, do, you know, don't gather any evidence, we cannot say that there's any difference between these types of automobiles, right? Unless we analyze to see whether the make of the vehicle is, is a factor, then, you know, um, <clears throat> the, we, we can't see anything. So we, we would have to say if our test does not yield anything, no difference. That's why the null hypothesis is always a statement of equality. We just say, well, this is not anything that we can see that's distinct. And then here, we, we won't identify which has more, which has less. We'll have reason, you know, we'll have suspicions about which is which. But uh, in order to state this just as simply as possible, we'll just say the antithesis of H subscript zero, the opposite is at least one is different. Right? We may not know whether it's mu subscript 1 is different from mu 3 or, or, or what. We're just going to say at least one is different. All right, so let's go ahead and just identifying different information from the problem. So here, capital N, remember that's the number of subjects from all of the different samples that we've taken. Uh, that is 12. So um, what else do we have? K is going to be equal to 3. That's the number of groups that we have. So this way we can identify the degrees of freedom for the numerator and the degrees of freedom for the denominator, and thus look up our critical F value. So that's the next thing that we're going to be doing <clears throat> is identify the critical region for this test. DFN is defined as k minus 1. So for us, we have 3 minus 1, also known as 2, for the degrees of freedom for the numerator. And then DFD is defined as capital N minus k. And so here, that would be 9. Got 12 minus 3, that gives us 9. So there we have the uh, specific uh, values, the, uh, oh, the other thing that we need, alpha, what significance level were we dealing with? 
alpha was equal to 0 0.05. Now we have all of the information that we need to look up the critical F value and thus get a sketch of the uh, distribution and the critical region, or the rejection region. And so here we're going to be looking in table H. And just keep in mind it is the F distribution. And the thing to remember here is each different page, so this, this distribution is spread out over multiple pages, each different page corresponds to just one single level of significance, one single alpha value. So we're looking on page 786 because we're using the significance level of 5% or 0 0.05. All right, what else? We have degrees of freedom 2. Uh, for, for the numerator, degrees of freedom uh, for the numerator is equal to 2. The degrees of freedom for the denominator are 9. And so we're looking in row 9 and column 2. And that's where we get the F critical value. Let's call it F subscript alpha. And we'll say that is 4.26. So there is our sketch of the distribution curve, the F distribution. So I, I don't know, uh, I don't know how accurate this is, but I remember it as that is what a sideways F looks like, right? So that's why we call this an F curve. I, I don't know if that's the rationale behind it, but it helps me to remember. So you might as well. The the picture, the sketch doesn't have to be perfect, but here. I want you to be able to know why why I'm using this critical value. So uh, that's why I'm including the information about the degrees of freedom for the numerator and for the denominator. That's why I'm including that there. So here, this gives me not only uh, not only a, a particular boundary value. That's that's the cut score, right? If our F score is Above that, we're going to be over, over here in this critical region. If our F score is below that, we're going to not reject the null hypothesis. But you know, basically, this two-dimensional picture kind of gives us you know, more, uh, I guess, a more visual um, way of describing it rather than just you know, remembering how, how numbers go, right? comparing them numerically. Going to kind of place them in a region on the distribution. All right, so let's get into the next bit: calculating the test statistic, the F value. And so the first thing here, we're we're going to calculate F. Just called up the data again, um, showing you essentially the calculations that I'm having the spreadsheet do for me. So here are all of the chi bars, right? We've got uh, the sample means for all of the groups that we've done here. So 37.25 for the small, uh, the small cars, uh, 35.4 for the sedans, and 26 for the luxury vehicles. As I mentioned, there's no, there's no nice way to pose the alternative hypothesis other than at least one of them is different. But in looking at the sample values, you can kind of begin to sort of hazard a guess as to which one or ones of them might be different from the others. And thus, if you uncover any significant differences, that tells you how you might want to regroup uh, these various different populations together to compare them with further tests. And then here, I've skipped showing you the long, you know, tedious calculations. Well, I mean, we have a small, small sample sizes, but all of these in green are what I uh, calculated using the uh, spreadsheet uh, for the sample variances. So these are S squares. And then the next thing that we do is we're going to calculate the grand mean, so-called grand mean. So that is denoted by chi bar subscript GM. And that we get by just summing up all of the sample values from all of the populations, all of the samples that we've taken. 
and then dividing by the total number of uh, subjects that we've used in all of those samples. And so that works out. So we basically we take all of these and add them all up and then divide by this one to four, five, five there, and three there. So that would be uh, this total worked out as 404. And then we're dividing that by the total number that we have there, which is 12. And that gives us 33.6. Six, seven. Okay, so we're going to continue. The next thing that we are going to be doing is computing the sums of squares. So the first one we'll do is the sum of squares for between groups, the between group variance or variation. Um, and this is given by the formula, the summation uh, n subscript i times chi bar i minus chi bar gm, and that whole thing squared. And so the way that's going to work is it's going to look like this. We're going to have four from the first group, the small cars, and their mean, if memory serves, was 37.25, right? Subtract away the grand mean, uh, which was, what was it? Uh, 33.667. And then that whole quantity squared. And that is the first term in that series. And then it proceeds on to, uh, let's see, the next one would be 5 times its mean, which was 30, uh, sorry, yeah, 30, 35.4, 35.4. Minus the same grand mean, 33.667, that whole quantity squared. And then finally, for the last group, we have plus three. There were only three in that sample. Its mean was 26. So that's the one that I'm suspicious about. If we determine that there is any significant difference, I'm guessing it would be the luxury sedans. Their mileage looks a little bit different. But further testing might be required. We haven't even finished this testing. So that's what we're going to do. That's the sum of squares. And of course, I am using the uh, spreadsheet program to help me out significantly here. So for this, I'm getting 242.72. Next, we're going to compute the within group variance. And so we're going to split that into computing the sum of squares within the groups, and then simply dividing that by the degrees of freedom for the denominator. So the formula for the sum of squares within groups is the sum of n subscript i minus 1. So essentially, that's the degrees of freedom for that. And then we're multiplying by the variance for each particular group itself. And so simply plugging in the information that we have for the first group, there were four items in that sample, four minus one, times the variance for that sample, 20.917, and so on. And similarly for the uh, remaining groups. Group size, five minus one, so that would be four, times the variance for that group, 37.3. And the last group thrown in there, and this gives us a total of Gives us a total of 225.95. All right, and let's go ahead and summarize all of that so that we can then compute the variances and then finally compute the test statistic. All right, so we'll summarize it in a, in an, a summary table for an ANOVA experiment. So the degrees of freedom between, remember that is the number of groups, and then and then minus one. So here there were three groups total, minus one, that gives us two. For the within group variance, the degrees of freedom here, well, we had 12 total data values from all of the groups. And we're going to subtract away three, so that gave us nine. And you know, we'll just keep track of this, the fact that 
our total uh, adds up to 11. And notice that that would be the same as the degrees of freedom for the whole data set. That would be capital N minus one. And then the next values that we're going to be filling in are 242.72, I believe. All right. Look back up here. Yep, that was that was this one. All right. And then the sum of squares within is going to be 225.95. I think that's what I remember seeing. Yeah, there it is. No, I was just looking right at it. Okay. And we can record the total there. That's usually done for us as well. So we'll add those together. So that total comes out to 468.67. And then the next thing that we're going to be doing are filling in the mean squares, the mean sum of squares. So here, in order to fill in this blank here, we're going to simply take the sum of squares and divide by 2. That's pretty easy. Gives us 121.36. And then similarly, we're going to take 225.95 divided by 9 and throw it down right there. And that came out as 25.11. So that's, I rounded it to two decimal places. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to calculate the F statistic. And that is going to be, remember, that's S squared divided by another S squared. So here, we're going to just take this value, 121.36, and divide it by 25.11. And so the end result there is 4.83. And here, let's just sneak back to the previous page and just take a look at what we had here. Here is our rejection region starting at 4.26. Here is our test value, 4.83. And that is within the rejection region. So we'll make the decision next. We'll reject the null hypothesis. And then since we just basically stated the alternative hypothesis pretty generically. We've already done step five for our summary. If we reject H subscript zero, then that means we, we pretty much accept whatever it was in H subscript one. And in our case this time, it just says that, you know, at least one is different. I've kind of got my eye on which one according to my sample, but then in order to really prove that luxury cars are definitely different from small cars or sedans, then we'd have to do a couple more independent tests and, and also see whether sedans and, and small cars have any differences. But that's all we would say for this ANOVA test. We'll do one more example in the next video where we skip all of the tedious, hard calculations, and we essentially just let the technology work for us, which is fine. And we'll see how to come up with the same results and save a little bit of time and make sure that you know, we don't get confounded by any small details in the calculations. All right, so stay tuned. One last video for the semester.